Former New England Patriot Julian Edelman had some real strong words for Lamar Jackson that got a lot of Ravens fans riled up. But you know what? Let's listen to exactly what he had to say. Yeah. Talk to me. I've learned my lesson. I'm never betting against the Chiefs mm -hmm. again. Okay? I will never bet against them. I lost a lot of money. Okay. But hey, you should have been betting them. It's not whatever. up to the Chiefs. We all know what the Chiefs are. They got Andy Reid, Patrick they Mahomes, do. Spagnola, Chris Jones, and everyone. Yeah. It's up to everyone else. We need to see a Joe Burrow come mm. out and do something, stay healthy, start fast. Mm. We need to see Lamar Jackson, who's been on a milk milk carton in the playoffs, mm. so he's missing. Good talking reckless, ain't he? So this conversation that he was having was about the Chiefs possibly three-peat and winning three Super Bowls in a row, and who was going to stop them? He sounded like he had a bit of animosity toward the Baltimore Ravens, even towards Lamar Jackson, because he said, you know what? I ain't never betting against the Chiefs again. And then it was brought up, who is going to stop the Chiefs? Who's going to be the one to take down the Chiefs? He said that if Joe Burrow gets healthy, maybe he can take down the Chiefs. But he talked about Lamar Jackson and said that, well, Lamar Jackson, he's been on a milk carton come playoff time. So basically saying that he has been MIA when it comes to the postseason. And this has been a big narrative when it comes to Lamar Jackson and those Baltimore Ravens that he and they are a big no-show come playoff time. But is it true? Is it accurate? Is that the case when it comes to Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens? Well, let's look at it. Just a couple of things. And we know that most people have recency bias. And I get that. You want to you, you automatically think about the latest thing that happened, what happened most recently. So let's go to the AFC Championship game. A lot of people say Lamar Jackson, he ain't show up in that AFC Championship game. Now, could he have played better? Oh, certainly. Certainly, for sure. Uh, there, there was that interception that he threw, even though it was pass interference. But the interception that he threw to Isaiah Likely in triple coverage. I know initially it looked like Isaiah Likely was open, but then that safety came out of nowhere and boom. But interception regardless. But again, it should have been in pass interference. But it is what it is. But in that same game, so much gets talked about. Lamar Jackson ain't sure. Lamar Jackson had a bad game. But Lamar Jackson, remember, he threw that beautiful touchdown to Zay Flowers uh, in the first quarter. Uh, amazing. Loved it. But... He also threw another touchdown to Zay Flowers. But guess what? Lamar Jackson threw the perfect pass. Zay Flowers ran a perfect route. Completion. Zay Flowers is getting his yak. He's running, running. Oh, this is getting ready to be a touchdown. Let's go. At the goal line. Mm. And it really hurts my heart talking about this again. I haven't even watched the highlights from that game not one time. But at the goal line, Zay Flowers fumbled the ball. And I'm not here to place the blame game. Oh, no, it's his fault that the Ravens. Oh, no, it's his fault. No, no, no. But I'm saying it's a group effort. It was not all Lamar Jackson. A couple of plays. Actually, one play here changes the game so much. But a lot of people, they don't talk about that. They don't mention that. They don't bring that up at all. You go back a previous week. The same playoffs, still the, the 2023 season and the 2024 playoffs. You go back a previous week before the Chiefs AFC Championship game. The Houston Texans versus Baltimore Ravens. What happened there? It, it's like that game for a lot of people, it's like it doesn't even exist. It's like it never even happened because they automatically bring up the AFC Championship. And, yes, that was the most important game. But in order to get to the AFC Championship game, you got to win the game before that, the divisional game. And that's exactly what the Baltimore Ravens did. And see, look what Lamar Jackson did in that game. He went for a double-double because he not only threw two touchdowns, but he ran for two touchdowns as well. But is, is that being MIA in the playoffs? Is that him being on a milk carton in the playoffs? And I get it. it hey, they're saying, oh, Lamar Jackson, he needs to play better in the playoffs. He needs to be better in the playoffs. And a lot of us, we, we just want to see that MVP Lamar Jackson come playoff time. Because we see it in the regular season all day, every day. But we want to see that same Lamar Jackson from the regular season in the postseason as well. And it's like, whenever we do see that Lamar Jackson, Ravens win. They win. Whenever he is himself, he does all the passing, but he does all the running too. He mixes it in. Ravens do their thing every time. Because we saw that in the Texans game. Remember the last time we saw that in the playoff game from Lamar? It was in 2020 versus the Titans. Remember that long run that he broke off against them Tennessee Titans? And a Dory Jackson thought he had it. He thought he had an angle on Lamar. Lamar said, what? You, you thought you would catch it. No thanks. But in that game, he mixed it up. He was throwing, 
but he was also running as well. And my thing with Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens as a whole, if they play winning football, they win. And I know that sounds very corny. It sounds cliche. It sounds so obvious. Like, yeah, of course, if you play winning football, you're going to win. But for the Baltimore Ravens, specifically in the playoffs, because so many times as a whole, as a collective unit, they do not play winning football. You go to that Chiefs game. What They ran the ball with their running back for six times? What are you doing? Who is that? Who are you? What's that about? Why, why would you do that? Why would you hinder yourself? Why would you make stuff more difficult for yourself, especially when the run was working? Again, this year, run dominant team. And not saying that you don't have to pass because you do need to pass in the playoffs. You need to be able to pass in the playoffs. But make life easier for yourself. Make a play action, really uh, a believable play action, because you're setting it up through the run game. Like, do what got you here. You knew your defense was going to do their thing, and they did. Defense showed up like crazy, but the offense, they let them down with the silly play call. And it was like, what was that? Why are we not running the ball like at all? At all. You go back um, to you, you go back to 2019. The and 2019 was so similar to the 2023 season because Baltimore Ravens super dominant in the regular season, broke all these rushing records, did that thing in the, in the passing game too now. So don't forget about that. They did that thing in the passing game too, but when they got to the playoffs, they just make themselves one-dimensional and they do not play winning football. When they don't play winning football in the playoffs, what happens? Yeah, you get it. You get it. 2019, they broke so many records on the ground, so many rushing records. It was, they were going crazy with it. But then what happened in the playoff game against the Titans? They ran the ball, what, either six or nine times with their running backs. Either six or nine times. Both numbers are, would, are disgusting. And unacceptable. And what did the Titans do? They bounced the Baltimore Ravens right on out the playoffs. Why? Ravens didn't play winning football. And then, of course, there were a lot of drops. And <laughs> some of them drops like the interceptions. It was, oh, 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 it was a lot of drops. <laughs> Ooh, that was an ugly one. It's just, it's just bad. It's just bad. And then I know Lamar, I know for some of them QB sneaks, he looked indecisive on them too. It was just an all-out bad game. And it was like, who are these Ravens? What? These ain't, these ain't the Ravens that we've been watching. Go 14-2. and two. That, These are not the Ravens that won 12 games in a row. Who, who are these people? I don't know who these people are. You even, and, 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 I, and I give Lamar a pass for this one, but it's still a game. So we even go back to 2018. We go to 2018. And the Baltimore Ravens, obviously, that was Joe Flacco's year. Joe Flacco got hurt. Lamar Jackson came in. Did his thing at the end of the regular season. Helped the Ravens get to the playoffs. Um, but in that game, in the playoff game then, Ravens running the RPO. Run the RPO. Read option. Da, 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 over and over and over and over again. And while they, they did that in the regular season. And it was working regular season. But this is a team that you just played two weeks prior. And you're doing the same thing that you were doing. Uh, you're trying to do the same thing that you were doing uh, in the regular season game. against the, again, You just played them two weeks ago. So they're pretty familiar with you. But well, you're trying to do the same thing. Now, I give it to them because they were actually going to their bread and butter. First quarter, wasn't working. Okay, cool. Second quarter, it still wasn't working. All right, cool. Hey, let's, let's make some adjustments there, buddy. Let, let's fix some stuff there, buddy. Let's play some winning football. Let's, let's open this thing up, buddy. Third quarter, they still continued to do the same thing, and it wasn't working. There was such a lack of adjustments. And it's like... Lamar Jackson, I feel like for that game, he can be excused. He was a rookie that year. Took over midseason. So it's like with, with coaching staff, we got to be better. Why are we not opening this thing up? This is playoffs, man. And you're seeing this read off. It's not working. We're not playing winning football. We're not coaching a winnable game. What are we doing? And it wasn't until the middle of the fourth quarter where they actually started letting him throw the ball. They actually started opening things up. And guess what the Baltimore Ravens did? They started coming back. They started coming back. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. It's like they finally started playing winning football, but by the time they started playing winning football, guess what? It was too late, and that was all she wrote. So I say all that to say this. When the Baltimore Ravens play their game, when they continue to do that in the playoffs, you ain't going to hear stuff like this. You ain't going to hear comments like this. Oh, yeah, Lamar Jackson on the milk. No, that's going to be null and void. I mean, it's really null and void now. But 
when they really win a Super Bowl. And we know what's going to happen. When is it going to happen? Hey, I mean, why not this year? I mean, you want to win a Super Bowl? Do, do your thing. But Ravens just got to play winning football. That's it. Don't try to prove nothing. You ain't got to try to be somebody who you aren't. And again, we're not saying you got to run the ball 45 times in the playoff. No, we're not saying that. But we are saying that don't neglect anything. Don't neglect who you are. Don't neglect what got you there. Because if you do, then these narratives, they'll be there forever. And, you know, of course, with some people, no matter what the Baltimore Ravens do, no matter what Lamar Jackson does, they're going to say the same thing. But those people, it they don't matter with them. But Ravens just got to get it done. And how can they get it done? By playing winning football. As y'all know, some of my favorite parts of these videos are when y'all send in questions that we can feature in the video just like we're getting ready to. If you would like to take part in that, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, shout out to all the patrons and the channel members, you can send it directly on Patreon. This next question came from my guy Melo. He said, good morning. I hope all is well with everyone. I showed my wife the videos you posted on my questions and she keeps and she said, you email like you talk. So I'm going to keep this super short. No, man, that's fine. Like, email how you talk because why? It's a conversation. We talk how we talk. So, no, you ain't got to send no super professional email like, oh, well, can you get this done for me, buddy? Another, no, man. Email how you talk. It's fine, Mrs. Mello. He got it. But anyway, he said, I feel like cutting Dayton Wade, Ben Cleveland, Bo Braid will blow up in our faces more than any other cuts if they do not make the 53 man roster. Wade especially gives me Shamar Bridges vibes. Big play is one catch away. Bo plays like a Raven. Ben, well, nothing sexy about old Lyman, but if we don't mention you, that's good. When he plays, we don't mention him. Oh, you ain't, you ain't, seen, ben, you ain't seen Ben Cleveland playing quarterback this, this past uh, Saturday afternoon? You ain't seen him play quarterback? You must have missed that play. But, yeah, <laughs> other than that, I would love to keep him as a debt piece. Um, but I, I think two out of these three people are getting cut for sure. And it sucks. It sucks. It's the nature of the business, though, man. And that being Dayton Wade and Bo Braid. Ben Cleveland, I think he got, he got a shot to stay uh, as a debt piece or potentially maybe starter. But if they trying you out at different positions, then that's usually not a good thing. But um, I, I think Dayton Wade and Bo Braid are out of there as far as the 53-man roster. Um, now, with that being said, the, th the thing about it, it could go a couple of different ways. We normally see it go a certain way. Uh, we'll fall in love with these players come preseason. We'll fall in love with these undrafted rookie free agents. Because we, we get excited. We want to see them do well. We envision how they will fit in on our favorite football team. We envision them making plays and envision them doing this and that and the third. It's like, oh, yeah, this guy would be great at that. That would be a great role for him. We envision all of that stuff. But a couple of things to think about. Um, they, they were undrafted rookie free agents. Uh, so seven rounds of the draft came and went and there were not any teams that were interested in enough in them to select them uh, with a draft pick. That does not mean they're bad players at all because we've seen plenty of undrafted free agents make it in the league, even on the Baltimore Ravens specifically. I mean, right there, we got Keith Mitchell. Man, oh, Keith Mitchell's so sad that he's out. But anyway, um, so they, they didn't get drafted. So uh, most of the league was not feeling them like that. Even the Baltimore Ravens, they weren't feeling them like that because they ain't use no draft pick on these guys. But um, so that kind of goes in the Ravens' favor. So maybe they could clear waivers and make it to the practice squad, even though the preseason is a game for you to put your skills on display for the world, not even for your team, but for the NFL world to see. Um, but I, I just it, it happens so many times, man, uh, where these, these preseason guys, these, these undrafted rookie free agents, they get cut. Uh, but then, hey, they may sign on somewhere else to somebody else's practice squad. And if the Ravens really love them like that, then they could sign them off of their practice squad and onto their 53-man roster. But um, a lot of times they end up clearing waivers and they become available for the Baltimore Ravens to sign them to their practice squad. So it's one of those things where we just got to wait it out. Uh, we just got to see what goes down. Because, yeah, I, I would love for the Baltimore Ravens to keep all three of everybody who you mentioned, uh, Dayton Wade, Ben Cleveland, and Bo Braid. But... It's a numbers game, and I think right now two out of the three are on the outside looking in. Next question came from my guy Javo. He said, with one last preseason game, it means one last game to show the Ravens 
what you can do. Uh, with that being said, who makes the roster and who gets cut? Heard you say we got like 10 safeties, so what happens there? Oh, well, well starting off with the safeties, because this even goes back to my, my, my guy Melo's question previously when he talked about Bo Braid. Like, when you think about that, again, I, Bo Braid looks great to me. He looks good. But it's so much veterans in front of him. Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, Eddie Jackson. Then you got the Ardarius Washington, safety slash corner. Um, you got... Um, you got Daryl Worley as well. They drafted Sanusi Kane, and you got Bo Bray. So that's a lot of safeties right there, man. Off top, that's a lot of safeties. So with all them, like, where's Bo Bray gonna fit in the mix? There, it's tough because that that that's so much. Um, and then he said, uh, "Does Pepe beat out Jalen Armour Davis?" Ooh, that's gonna be a tough one right there because you got Marlon Humphrey. Brandon Stevens. Um, now, one one thing that could actually help that well, I could see them both making the roster because you got Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, Nate Wiggins, uh, TJ Tampa. You know, he's he's been pretty quiet. I know he just got back from injury, so I'm sure they'd slowly ramping him up. But um, that's four cornerbacks right there. But Jalen Armour Davis and Pepe Williams. What helps those two out? Is the fact that Arthur Millette is supposed to be out for September. So what I envision the Baltimore Ravens doing is putting Arthur Millette on injury reserve to where he can come back uh, in a, a little bit later, obviously. So what that would do in turn would be to, oh, yeah, got to throw Ardarius Washington in the mix, too, because, again, corner slash safety is a little bit of both. But what that could do for Pepe Williams and Jalen Armour Davis, instead of pitting them two against each other, that could open up an additional roster spot. So maybe they both could end up making a team. And then when Arthur Millette is healthy, then the Ravens, they can make some decisions there based on everybody who made the team, everybody who's available. Some people may not be available. They deal with that when they deal with it. But that would be a good problem to have. But I think that opens it up for both of them to possibly make the team. And he said, does Wade, Dayton Wade, beat out Deontay Hardy? Um, now... Deontay, Deontay Hardy, does Dayton Wade beat out, beat out Deontay Hardy? Man, got my mind like confused. Um, no, I don't think so. Reason being because they, Deontay Hardy is going to be a primary return guy. And especially with the new kickoff rules and whatnot, they're going to want somebody there with some experience. But with Dayton Wade, the only way I would have seen that happening is if, as a receiver, yeah, I think he could beat him out. But Deontay Hardy's a return man. And if they would have put Dayton Wade in the, at the return role, like put him at kick return, put him at punt return, and let him show his stuff there, then I think, okay, maybe he could have a shot there. And if we heard about, like, Dayton Wade returning punts or returning kicks in practice, I haven't heard it. I don't know if he has or not. Maybe I missed it if he did, but I don't think he has. But y'all let me know if y'all heard if he did or not. But um, if we heard something like that, then maybe. But I don't think we've heard anything like that, and we obviously didn't see it in the preseason, in the two preseason games. Like, if they would have put Day and Wade back there, punt return and kick return, I would have been like, ooh, okay, maybe like Preston Hardy for a spot. But since they didn't, I don't think so. And he said, so what's your 52 roster looking like? Hope all is well. And remember one thing, always put God first and watch his greatness shower down on you. I like that. Appreciate that, Javo. 53-man roster prediction. We'll save that for when we do it on Bleach Report real soon. Next question came from DeAndre. He said, what's your honest opinion on a wide receiver three situation? Who do you think deserves it more, Tylen Wallace or Nelson Aguilar? I feel like at this point, Wallace deserves the spot over Nelly and has better hands than him. Well, I do not think there is one Ravens fan that will argue with you on Tylen Wallace having better hands than Nelson Aguilar. With Nelson Aguilar, he is who he is. At this point, we know who he is. He's a role player. He's somebody, though, last year that nine times out of ten, when the Baltimore Ravens needed him to come up, when they needed to count on him, he came through. He had a few drops, but it wasn't – I don't remember it being nothing crazy, and especially not in no, like, bad situations. I don't think – I think maybe in – um what's the Colts game we had a drop? I forgot what game he had a drop. There, there was maybe one bad situation where it was like, oh, he really dropped it. But other than that, Nelson Aguilar, role player, did his thing. His drops were not a concern. And I, I know through training camp thus far, there have been some reports where Nelson Aguilar's been having a little drops he's here and there. And there. Oh, yeah. But so, yeah. Um, who deserves it more versus who is going to get it? That's such a great question because they don't necessarily go hand in hand. Tylen Wallace, he could deserve it more. He could be, he seems like he's a bit more explosive. 
than Nelson Aguilar, just 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 a bit. And with Tylen Wallace, the the only thing we don't like have anything bad to say about Tylen Wallace. The only thing that he's been missing is opportunity. That's really it. That that is the only thing. I know he dealt with some injuries and whatnot, but. We can't say, oh, man, this guy, he got the drop seeds, or he's a bad route runner. Oh, man, he's so slow. Oh No, we we can't say none of that stuff. Only thing, we, he ain't been getting opportunities because it's been a lot of people in front of him in the Ravens' depth chart. That's it. So right now, I, I, I can't necessarily say Tylen Wallace deserves it more necessarily. We've obviously seen Tylen Wallace a lot more in preseason because we haven't seen Nelly at all because Nelly's a, a, like, kind of like a starter. But it's going to go to Nelly. Like, it's going to go, could be like, obviously, Zay Flowers, that's wide receiver one. Wide receiver two, three, could be Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar, Nelson Aguilar, Rashad Bateman. They can mix and match there. We'll see how they do. But so that that's who's going to get it. It's, if, if it's between Nelson Aguilar and Tyler Wallace, it's going to go to Nelson Aguilar. He's the veteran more, with more experience. Who deserves it more? I can't say. I, I can't say, but we would like to see Tylen Wallace get some more burn, get some more playing time. And if he does, hey, you never know. Because, again, we, we, remember last year? I, and I know, like, it ain't all about that one punt return that he got on the Rams. That was huge, though. That, like, that changed everything, man, obviously, because he got them to win. And that was such a such a moment. And that was his first time doing a punt return. Tylen Wallace like, look, man, that, that was my first time doing it. Give me a shot. 